everybody welcome to yet another week of misunderstood i am so excited that two weeks in now and we have had an episode every week i'm trusting god to be more consistent regarding this platform but if you're new here my name is nyamira kashuki and i run this platform i created misunderstood because i wanted it to just be a place where we give understanding to different conversations different seasons that you're going through different experiences that are happening in your life and you're wondering oh my goodness what do i do about myself what do i do now i don't come here because i know all the answers i come here because i really 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 am intentional about me sharing what i have learned because what's the purpose of learning if it's all for you share it with someone yeah and so that's why i, I host this platform now over the last few weeks we've been having conversations about um, social anxiety how to help how to make friends but today's episode is one of the conversations i have begun to become extremely extremely passionate about because it is so intentional in life it is not not intentional i think that's the wrong word it is so important in life that you become intentional about the new you or reinventing yourself. So this episode is all about reinventing yourself. Now, if this was a topic, a gospel in the Bible, I would definitely be an evangelist because I think reinventing yourself is such an important thing. And this episode is particularly tailored for you in case you're feeling like, oh man, I'm stuck, things aren't panning out, what I'm constantly doing the same thing and it's not, it's not, um, it's not changing. I'm I'm losing a lot of who I am. I have no sense of, I have no control of who I am or what I'm doing. And so this episode is for you, not because you're, you're, you're in a very dangerous place, but because all those things that are happening in your life are really just pointing you in the direction of, hey, it's time to reinvent yourself. And so that's what this conversation is about. Now, reinventing yourself is not waking up in the morning and re-sculpting your face or changing the way your body looks. Now, that could be a, more, a way of it, but I'm preempting the conversation. But reinventing yourself has a lot to do with how you perceive yourself and also a genuine picture of how you want it to unfold. Now, the first thing to realize is that in reinventing yourself, you must have, and I think the key word there is a must, you must have a picture of what the dream you would look like. Now, for someone watching, maybe the dream you looks like um, more in control of your finances. Maybe the dream you looks like you are in a healthier relationship. Maybe the dream you looks like you are, you're in control of your health and your weight. Maybe the dream you looks like you are, I don't know, you are, you're living out your purpose. Maybe the dream you looks like you're, looks like you doing big things. You know what I mean? There is no such thing as a small dream, be, but don't allow yourself to see yourself so tiny. The dream you should be something extremely, extremely beautiful in your mind, but also something you feel deep, deep down is not a very hard thing for you to achieve because for you to reinvent yourself means you're going to take significant steps to this dream person becoming something. Let me give a huge disclaimer at this point that when you're reinventing yourself, do not be harsh on anything you're doing. I think the trick here is to say every small thing that you do allows for the bigger picture to come into place. You know, um, I've been, I think one jury, if I'm not wrong, and Ben have been doing this painting thing. And one time I think I went to visit them and I was like, ah, let's paint. She would actually done to me, let's paint. So I took Ben's um, painting thing and I began painting. But it was so interesting because it's not paint by number. So every number represents a color, so you paint it. But every small thing, it looks like a small line, but it has a specific color. That small thing, you can dismiss it, but if you color it wrong, it destroys the whole picture. So this is just to let you know that every small step you're taking, appreciate yourself. Clap for yourself. And I mean it. Like it could be literally sitting down at the end of the day and saying, well done, well done, well done, well done, Yawira. You tried, you did something today for the, the dream you. Or it could be in the big things that you're doing. Also, don't forsake those. You know, I've come to realize we talk a great deal about celebrating the small things, but even the big things you do, are, are, those need to be celebrated as well. So whatever it is that you're doing to reinvent yourself, appreciate yourself all along the way. 
Now, the thing that I find so interesting about the human mind, because it has happened to me so many times, is that every time I envision the dream Nyawira, I immediately begin to draw out limitations about me. Quickly, I say this. I say, like I envision that, oh, Nyawira, you know, one day you're going to host a huge platform people are gonna come in thousands and they're gonna be blessed because you're gonna be sharing some serious heavy truths with them and immediately i finish that thought or that dream i quickly say but how will you do it who do you know what do you have what and i start to talk down at my dream the secret to reinventing yourself is killing every ounce of limitation that whispers into your ear telling you that you cannot do it or you cannot achieve it i tell you this with all sincerity sincerity is that the reinvention of the person you want to become lies solely in the submission to the truth that you can do it do not let anyone or anything particularly yourself tell you that you're not able to reinvent yourself you are able and you are deserving of you choosing to do it okay now let's bring it home because sometimes it's, it, it it sounds good when it's okay don't leave it yourself you can do it but let's bring it home is that i know i've struggled with this if you've been my if you're my friend i know you're watching and just dying of laughter is that i have in so many situations had weird diets where every once a year i eat no protein or i've done a 75 carb free diet 75 day carb free diet I have done a shoe. I have tried doing a sugarless diet for a week, and every time I do these things, the reason I they end and I go back to my bad behavior is because I start telling myself things like, "Hi, this is not the way to live, Nyarira. What are you doing?" Yet I know the implications of what I'm doing because, like, let me give you the seventy-five day challenge. I tried it because my intake of vegetables was so low, and I really wanted to build a habit where I'm I'm eating. Um, a lot of vegetables intentionally when it was done i'm back to a lot of carbs a lot of protein and my vegetables choo, they dipped again only because i told myself this thing isn't made for me so don't limit yourself and sometimes we don't we we like to say it when it's other people but let me say it to you because it's something that happens to me my limitations have been found the loudest in my mind because sometimes I don't even get to a place where I say it. I tell, and my mind just cancels it even before it can become something I say. So how to fight a limitation is vocalize it, say it, write it down somewhere, but then also tell someone else, they hold you accountable so the limitation doesn't become a hindrance to you reinventing yourself. The third thing that you need to do that I really enjoy about reinventing a person, particularly myself, is environment you cannot change in the same environment you are dying in it, it it doesn't work it doesn't work it doesn't work because environments become the conducive space for you to become what you need to become now let me give you a good example now by then let me just give a disclaimer environments are not is not like a physical space it could be a physical space it could be a physical space because maybe it's somewhere you keep on going and it's undoing your reinvention. So it could be a physical space. An environment could be your friends. An environment could be the things you're consuming. All these things, they, keep, they stagnate or cause growth based on how, what environment you've exposed yourself to. Now, let me give you an illustration that I came to learn the other day. I was sending to, I think, a salmon. I think it was a salmon. I think it was a salmon I was listening to. But they, he said something, I think it was either Bishop Jakes or Pastor George, I can't remember who it was. But one of them was talking about growth. And they painted such a beautiful picture because they said growth is a very messy thing. For a tree, a seed is cast into the ground and it's buried. Then it comes up and it starts to grow, it becomes this huge tree. But for a tree, a seed when it's in the ground, think about that environment. First buried means no one is seeing its process of growth. That's a great place to tell you. Not everybody will see the process of your reinvention. That doesn't mean it's not happening. I felt that. 
the second thing is to tell you that now it's buried it's now under it's die it's it, in fact i think the bible alludes to it saying it dies then it lives again and i think jesus was using this and talking about his death and resurrection now i get it but it dies down there and dying is that it dies to its natural space okay the third thing that happens is that for a farmer is that you you till the soil and this could mean that you place manure now let me tell you i don't think we're around manure it doesn't stink it stings you know like you feel like it smells so bad it it, it like it burns over here and i'm not talking about the manure that is dry i'm talking about fresh manure where you it, it's so alive in its nature but think about it the stench of that manure is affecting me but it's blessing the seed this is to tell you that you could despise the environment that you're reinventing yourself in because what, of what other people are thinking or what other people are saying manure stinks for me who is not the seed but for the seed it's so important so the stench you're avoiding is helping the seed grow so don't despise the fact that manure is around you, reinvention, unfortunately, only makes sense to me, the person in the season, not to everybody. And that's a great place to tell you that in your process of reinvention, don't justify your reinvention to people. You know, I'm working on me because I'm choosing me. I'm choosing, I'm choosing to go on this diet because it's going to be good for me. And I'm happy for you. But unfortunately, if, if the results don't come out the way you did, you'll feel like your reinvention was a fail. But maybe it wasn't a fail. But because you told so many people about this reinventing season you're in, they are expecting so much from you that unfortunately, if they don't see the effect, mm. they despise your season of reinvention. So don't, don't be like the seed. Be aware that the barring, the lightless season, the stinking season of manure around you, will all be of benefit when you become a strong tree. So people will celebrate the tree, they won't celebrate the that team at the Bodanio. So your environment is very important. And evaluating your environment um, could be doing what I've, I've shared with several in this platform is evaluate your friendships. In this season of reinvention and this dream person I'm creating, are the friends I'm with a stumbling block to my reinvention? Now that's a painful one to do considering maybe you meet these friends and they, they just get me. Me, my friends, they get me. <laughs> and it's okay if they do. But I also want to let you know that when you're reinventing yourself, you're not looking for friends who just get you. You're looking for friends who grow with you. Meaning reinvention won't catch them by surprise because they also want it for you. So evaluate your friendships very carefully. When it comes to places in the reevaluation season, re reinventing season, places matter. If, for example, you're trying to cut off a habit like alcoholism, or you're cutting off a habit like um, even, unfortunately, let's talk about it. If you're cutting off laziness, it it would mean that the places that you that con that make laziness comfortable you leave them if you know me the screen excites me i can sit down on our couch for hours and watch a show i can be so consumed in it and how i knew i had a problem was that i could watch the same show many many times and still not feel like it's an issue there was already a really big problem there but how i killed my obsession with the screen was that I would wake up in the morning knowing that I'm going to get out of the house, get, get out of my bed, go and shower, have breakfast, put breakfast in a takeaway cup and go go work somewhere. So I kill the thinking that this couch can control how my day will look like. All right. So for places, evaluate what has permitted you to be stagnant in the season you're in. With that in mind, find a way to move away from it. I'm not telling you to rip the bandage one morning. I'm telling you move away move away not run or fly but we'll talk about where running and playing is important the fourth thing that you need to do when you're figuring out you're reevaluating yourself is the habits you are accepting or you are tolerating or you're enjoying you know habits are interesting because you began doing them out of maybe interest and over time, you can't stop doing it. Now it's become a part of your life. It's holding you at ransom. Oh my good God Almighty. 
be careful because what habits do is that they they begin to become a sense of control for you let me give you a good example a habit could be that every time you are not doing something actively you're on your phone on TikTok or on Instagram or on threads and or on Twitter it's not that those are bad platforms but a, a, a toxic habit that you've established is that you will not allow yourself to do any other thing for entertainment save for using this platform so you begin to become addicted to your phone habits that are constantly entertained become addictions and addictions are dangerous because at that point you need to in, to bring in more people and different people need to come to your rescue so to eliminate the habit or to reinvent yourself when it comes to habits the biggest question you must ask yourself is what is taking control of me because that's what habits do you know one of the habits i'm trusting god that i can become more deliberate about is in the area of reading more books because i've realized that every time i so i carry up I, well i've been reading a few books i think in my new year i told myself i'm gonna buy myself three books and i bought myself three books and i've been reading one and so every time let's say i get into an uber i'll have my handbag right next to me and so i i I'll, I'll, you know me i'm always carrying a thermal cup with my tea and so i'm holding my tea and i'm sipping my tea but i'll look into my handbag and i'll say Nyamira, read 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 so i'll take my book and i'll start reading but after a few pages i feel like hey this is becoming too intense i'll put on my book and i'll start i'll start um going scrolling through different apps on my phone that habit is dangerous because i realized that i am not allowing my brain to read or to acquire information through a platform i really am. i really like reading books it's really entertaining but i don't know what's talked along the way but now i do know what's talked along the way my interest for reading became replaced by my joy for these platforms so caution is important finally is a very important thing in reinvention let me tell you to reinvent yourself successfully in whatever area of life you're in the number one thing you must do is change and intentionally work on your mindsets how are you thinking about things you know you you reinventing yourself is building a new is building building um a house for example envision it with me so i'm building a house i'm building a house i'm building a house i'm building a house but my mindset is telling me otherwise and so it's very negative it's very hostile so what am i doing as i'm putting brick upon brick upon brick I'm bringing down brick upon brick upon brick with my mindset. And so your mindset is so important because you need to condition your mind to tell yourself that the person you want to become needs you to be positive, needs you to be great, grateful. Now, in mindset, it's interesting because there's a mindset that tells you that you... There are mindsets that are strange. For example... One of the mindsets I'm trying to work on myself, and by the way, I think I, think I should have said this at the beginning, reinvention is, is not uh, tomorrow morning I'm perfect. It's a constant progressive journey. One of the mindsets I'm, I'm conditioning my mind to get comfortable with is contentment. And I'll tell you why. For the longest time, I've been complaining about certain things. I, you find me just saying, oh man, we need to move out of this house. We need to leave this house now. We need to leave this house now. Contentment is telling myself, Nyawira, be careful. You've lived here for X amount of time. You've paid your rent for X amount. Of, you guys have paid your rent for X amount of time. God has helped you through all that. You have a place to live. You have, and it may not necessarily be the dream house I want, but for where I am, it's working. Contentment is a mindset that tells you the dream person needs to start from somewhere be comfortable with where you are also and so i i i i know that a mindset that i'm really trying to condition myself to becoming more more intentional about is that i'm not going to be complaining as much i'm going to evaluate what is the benefit of the season i'm in what is it good for me for now okay and that helps me a lot now reinventing yourself is not the answer to every problem but i will tell you that reinventing yourself 
will give you a sense of zeal towards life because you are so intentional about bringing up this new person that you're trying to become. I think two, three years ago, I talked a great deal about how I want to become this person. I want to do these things. I want to do all these things. But I think only recently did I ask myself, you want to do all these things, but what are you doing now to become this person? And that's when this conversation became more intentional. And I haven't shared this with anybody, and I think it's a safe space to share it, is that after that conversation with myself, I told myself, you know what, Nyavira, reinvent yourself. Take up another class. And I, and I, I did an online program that ended mm -hmm. up me becoming a certified coach in confidence coaching. And I, I got certified. And I was like, hey, good job, Nyavira. And that, that certification gave me a sense of confidence to say that if I put my mind to it, I can do it. All right? And it's just to encourage you is that maybe you've talked yourself out of this season of reinvention. Maybe it has come to you and you've said, ah, I, uh, uh, I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the commitment. One of the things I think I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do if you're willing to do it to me <laughs> is let's challenge ourselves to reinvent ourselves in small, small pieces. Okay. And this is to tell you, start small. Tell yourself that you're going to reinvent yourself in the area of waking up early. Now, this is to tell you that you could do it successfully for four days and then the fifth day you wake up at a later time and you feel like, oh, back to the drawing board. There's nothing wrong with going back there. Start again, start again, start again. You know, one of the things I have loved about my relationship with God is that he doesn't tell you to necessarily start with him. He doesn't curse you if you don't start with him, but he'd rather if you did. And so one of the things I will tell you is that even as you reinvent yourself and you paint this picture of this dream person, I know it has worked for me is that I ask God, does this person satisfy the person you want me to become? And when he says yes, it, the whole reinvention season becomes a bit easier because you know you're doing it with God. So start with him as you envision it. The second thing, as I had said earlier, is don't limit yourself. Resist the art to speak ill of your season of reinvention. The Bible says that do not forsake the days of humble beginnings. For in this more, the Lord delights in the beginning of a matter. Can you imagine God delights in the beginning of a matter? Like he's seen it all. He's seen the beginning, the end. He has seen it all. But he delights in the beginning of a matter. Meaning... When you limit yourself, you limit the opportunity for the beginning of that matter. So don't dismiss it in any way or chance. The third thing is evaluate your environment. The seed the analogy will always work. Just because it's in the ground doesn't mean it will be there forever. It will become something different. Many people don't understand what you're doing. It's not for them to understand. It's for you to reinvent yourself. So be okay with you knowing what you're doing and not everybody being okay with it. Okay? Finally, the fourth thing is your habits. What are you working on? Be careful that the habit that you have given room doesn't become an addiction because from there we need more help. But at the place of a habit, evaluate the habits that have taken control over you and ask yourself, how can I regain control on those in those small things, okay? And also, that's a good place to tell you, introduce a new good habit. It doesn't always have to be a nasty habit. Finally, Renew your mind, renew your mind, renew your mind, renew your mind. Change your mindset. How are you thinking about things? How is your perception about things? Is the glass always half empty? Never half full? Or are you the ones who say, but there's water? No. Find a, find a clear perception of life. And in so doing, I pray that that perception becomes a positive one. Because it will push you to see things a bit more easily and more happily. I love you because I know that reinvention chooses calls for you to love yourself, but also calls for you not to be comfortable with who you are, thinking that that comfort will push you to another level. Comfort tells you sit down. Reinventing tells you try again. So just keep trying, all right? Um, I'm not a master in this area, and I'll say it like a broken record every time because I also need to remind myself that I don't have all the answers. But I would like to know from you, have you ever tried reinventing yourself? Um, what pushed you to it? What did you do? What did you learn? 
what are you looking at trying let me know in the comment section leave a comment down there um tell me something something anything it could even be that hey i don't know say something leave a comment share this with a friend or two but above all else choose to reinvent yourself it's for you it's not for the others the others will benefit from your reinvention but the reinventing is a thing that you can only do on your own until next time i love you all so deeply have a great great day